Hey guys, welcome back. For those who are new and haven't been here that long, I'm an MRA or a men's rights advocate. But for those who have been here for a while, you already knew that. I've often spoken about this thing called a sentencing gap. It's where men receive about 63% longer in jail than a woman for the exact same crime. That's if a woman gets any jail time at all, because she's more likely to get off with a light and punishment throughout the whole process. This is ridiculous. If you want equality, then it should be in all cases, not just the good. Now that you know about it and how I feel about it, you can kind of guess how I feel about today's video subject. I saw this on an R8 bear and a Miss Misa stream the other day and I just had to do a video on it. So let's get started shall we? 8% of prisoners are women, that's about 8% too many. Female incarceration numbers are at records highs and climbing. Dean and Head of School of Law at Durkin University, Dr. Foran Foran, thinks that the undeniable differences between men and women when it comes to committing crime should be reflected in a fundamentally different approach to the sentencing of women. When it comes to committing crimes, humans have two distinct forms. Overwhelmingly, men perform the most criminal acts, and, with only a hint of exaggeration, women never commit the most heinous offences. Women constitute approximately 8% of all Australian prisoners. That figure may seem small, but it should be somewhere between 0 and 1% of the total prison population. Let me explain. When women kill, it is usually motivated by different factors than when men kill. Women often kill against the backdrop of victimisation and hopelessness, not because they are angry or revengeful. The most recent figures relating to offence types for which people are in prison show that 9% of women women were in prison for homicide and related offences. The most common offences for which women are imprisoned are unlawful entry 10%, theft 8%, fraud and deception offences 8%, drug offences 17% and offences against justice procedures 11%. By contrast, the majority of men are in prison for acts of violence or sexual offences. Around 30% of male prisoners are classified as minimum security, whereas more than 70% of female prisoners have this clarification. Women who commit the same crime as men should, in most cases, receive lighter penalties. This should be so for three reasons. Women reoffend less frequently than men, by a very considerable margin. The impact of imprisonment on women is generally more damaging than on men. Women who are imprisoned for a long time can have their right to procreate effectively negated. Women also suffer more while they are imprisoned. They are more likely to have mental health issues and be victims of sexual abuse. Women perform a greater portion of the caretaking roles in society than men. Removing women from society often has a devastating impact on their children, relatives and other dependents. This disruption should be minimalised. Alternatives to a prison sentence for female offenders should be developed. Other solutions for serious, such as 24-7 CCTV and electronic monitoring. Effectively eliminating the threat of imprisonment from the female psyche will not encourage them to commit more crime. Empirical data establishes that there is no link between severe penalties and low crime. The only policing and sentencing approach that reduces crime is increasing the perception in people's minds that if they commit a crime, they will be caught. Cool. There is a difference between treating male and female criminals equally and treating them equitably. Equally is when the same punishment is handed down. Equitably is when the punishment handed down impacts the two groups to the same extent. In short, equal means exactly the same, whereas equitable means fair. It is a misguided sense of equality to suggest that female offenders should be treated the same as males. Yes, some women in the community commit acts that seriously damage others, and yes, they require harsh treatment, but this justifies Australia having one female jail not a dozen. Finally, implementing changes to the sentencing system that will benefit women does not necessarily prejudice men. The opposite is the case. Reforms will prompt a assessment of all the sentencing principles for non-violent and non-sexual offenders, including men. This is the only tenable approach to dealing with Australia's prison overcrowding crisis. I first want to address the part where they say it is misguided sense of equality to suggest that female offenders should be treated the same as males. Why is it misguided? I thought feminists wanted to be treated like men. Now that you get in it, albeit slowly when it comes to sentencing, you now want to shift it so that you no longer want flat out equality, rather you want equity. The second thing I want to address is where they use women who are in prison for a long time can have their right to procreate effectively negated. Would they say men have a right to procreate? I always thought the feminist slogan was, you're not entitled to our bodies, when this quote seems to suggest that women feel entitled to a man's body. I'm in no way big tail, but these bastards have a point in this. It does seem like one wall for me and another for she. And finally, feminists are always claiming that the fact that women perform a greater proportion of caretaking role in society than men is sexist and now they want to use it as a crux to get them out of prison for committing crime. Nah, that's not how this works, you bunch of old bins. It seems to me they just want to blame men for women ending up in jail. Why else would they say that women who kill usually do it because they're victimised? Would you accept that same excuse from a man who has killed a woman, for example? We all know you wouldn't. Women who commit crime deserve to do the same time a man would. End of story. If you don't think that, then don't commit the fucking crime to begin with. Thank you guys for listening. Please consider becoming a patron to keep this channel going. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time.